Zai time. Quitting was not an option. They've been counted out. But can they upset the number one team in the country? Kara Elzing loves the chip on the shoulder of the Wildcats right now. Yeah, and Steffi, she's challenged them to bring that confidence again. Time for today's Need to Know. It's brought to you by Principal Financial Group. Kentucky has waited 40 years for another SEC tournament title. They will have to take down a team that has been dominant. We're going to use that word a lot. In this tournament, they have won six of the last seven, talking about the South Carolina Gamecocks. South Carolina brings in the experience in this situation, in this championship game. It's the first time for everyone on this Kentucky roster. How do they handle it? And you look at where South Carolina goes right away. Aaliyah Boston getting it done. The double team is too late. You got to get there early if you're going to stop number four, Aaliyah Boston. You know, usually you pick a player on this Kentucky lineup to talk about when their faces come up off of the scoreboard. Carolyn, everybody is shooting well for Kentucky right now. That's been their key. Well, the chemistry of Kentucky has really bode well for the success that they have had. They have won nine games in a row. Jasmine Massengill elevates over Destiny Henderson. She's short on the shot, but gets her own rebound and kicks out to Treasure Hunt. Buries that three. South Carolina starting five. Not only do they have Aaliyah Boston down low, they have Victoria Saxton. They have size at every position. And you're going to see Kentucky really challenge <laughs> they were going to challenge to see if South Carolina would knock down perimeter shots. Zaya Cook, she was really frustrated, frustrated with her performance yesterday. That's a good sign for South Carolina. Yeah, only three points for Zaya Cook, but came out and hit her first shot. That is a good sign. Dawn Staley has created a monster in a good way with the South Carolina program. It's impressive what she has done. They have been the top team in the nation all season. They have beaten 11 ranked opponents more than any other team in the nation. Created a monster, more like created Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's scary if you're not a Gamecock. That's true. That's true. Zaya Cook coming off the screen. Bree Beal. Good hustle on the rebound, but it will go to Kentucky. Kyra Elsie, just her second season for Kentucky, and you heard Steffi talk about how she challenged this group. It was do or die, and they responded. They love their head coach. Absolutely, and she listens to them. She understands that, you know, look, they felt the pressure this season. They wanted to play well for Ryan Howard. They were expected to have Blair Green. She went out hurt. Oh, here she comes already out of the gate. Two in a row. It's a long two for Ryan Howard. That's what we've seen, though. This is Kentucky's fourth game in this SEC tournament. If Ryan starts hot, it catches fire with everyone else. It just gives Breeze confidence into the team in blue. But Aaliyah Boston's going to be a problem for Kentucky. They don't have the size to match up with her. You know, early in the season when we would do South Carolina games, at times it would take a while for the Gamecocks to get the ball inside. Not today. Not when you're playing for a championship. Jasmine Massengill, Kentucky continues to hit shots. Both teams shooting lights out early on in this one. Kentucky in this zone. Destiny Henderson. It'll stay with South Carolina. Stars already shining. We talked about we talked about them early in the open. They are the leaders for their team. You have Ryan Howard knocking down the long two, and then on the other end, South Carolina has come down two possessions that they have scored. It has been through Aaliyah Boston. There I she goes it. with the basketball again. I love it. Strong, powerful move. Aaliyah Boston catches it. The thing that she's improved on this season is court awareness. 
She knows that she has pulled Treasure Hunt away from the basket and has that driving lane to her left. That's a strong, beautiful move by Leah Boston. That's going to be the first foul on Treasure Hunt. You'll want to keep an eye on some foul trouble for Kentucky. If they get into foul trouble, that's a problem because South Carolina goes really deep on their bench. Well, the Treasure Hunt is crucial. She was converted to a post player. She played her whole career as a guard, having to play inside and having to handle this. 16 points, 13 rebounds in the tournament for Aaliyah Boston. Plus the steals and the blocks. It's an all-around game for Aaliyah Boston. Absolutely. She is number one in PER player efficiency rating in the country of, because of how she affects the game on both sides of the ball. Hedges on the screen on Howard. Dre Edwards in the corner. That's been the story of Kentucky's offense. It's always going their way, at least this week in Nashville. Look, they came in with a game plan. Kentucky knows in order to have a chance, have a shot of knocking off the number one team in the country, they've got to make outside shots. Zaya Cook. Two threes for Zaya Cook to start this game. We talked to Don before the game, and I asked her about Zaya Cook, and I asked her about Destiny Henderson as well. They, Destiny Henderson, two years ago, was MVP of this tournament, right? And I asked Don, you know, is this going to be a matter of getting the ball in the paint? She said, our backcourt's going to have a good game today. That's all I got to say about that. I mean, she knows her team. And he gives it up to Cook. Layup. Cookies. Zaya Cook already with eight points. She had three yesterday. Now here's the matchup I want to see. Bree Beal, one of the best defenders in the country, taking on one of the best players in Ryan Howard. When Bree Beal is guarding her primary assignment, they're held to under 40% below their average 11 times this season. That's how dangerous a defender she is. You have to love a player like Bree Bill. In high school, she was a scorer. When she came to South Carolina, accepted the role of being the glove, the stopper on defense for South Carolina. That's what got Bree Bill in the starting lineup as a freshman. Well, it's Zaya Cook now. She's in her bag. She started out hitting the shots from the perimeter now, going off the bounce. She's a very talented and capable player. And the game starting to come to her right now on Sunday. Destiny Henderson misses. What's she got in that bag? Oh, just wait. There's plenty of tricks. Yeah. <laughs> Zaya Cook, she carries a suitcase, her bag's so big. Olivia Owens off the bench for Kentucky, off the window for Kentucky. Kentucky is not intimidated one bit by the rankings of South Carolina. You talked about how Kentucky built their confidence in the fourth quarter the last time these two teams met. Haven't lost a game since. Jasmine Massengill in the passing lane, trying to wait on some help. Dre Edwards gets there in time. Kentucky chemistry has just continued to build all season long. Kyra Elsey told us, look, they speak their own language. There's a foursome. Ryan Howard, Dre Edwards, Jasmine Massigale, and Treasure Hunt. Henderson gets stopped by Ryan Howard. Wildcats share the basketball so well, they have assisted on 62% of their made field goals this week. Blocking foul on Destiny Henderson. Aaliyah Boston has come out on a mission. She wants another SEC tournament title. Seven points for the two-time All-American. More on Aaliyah Boston on the other side. Aaliyah Boston is a lot of fun as long as you're not the team facing her because she is so impressive. 23 straight double-doubles, that's an SEC record, and she knows the game of basketball so well, you can see it in her play. She's a student of the game, and she is only always trying to find ways. That's a great cut by Dre Edwards. Good out of timeout execution by Kentucky, but Aaliyah is always trying to find ways to better her game. Each year, she has improved, whether it be her strength, 
her skill set. She got to keep her shoe on. She put that on real quick. If it's only half on. It's a flat tire. If she made that shot half <laughs> she wild, that would have been something out. How about that? What do you think, Steffi? Another big basket by Aliyah Boston. What's up with stars in our league and their shoes? We got to get them to tie their <laughs> shoes better. You know, had such a great conversation with her mom before the game, and I asked her, uh, Cleon Boston, when she knew her daughter would be special, guys, and she got kind of emotional in telling me that it, it wasn't never really looked at like that. She said it was all about getting her a scholarship. Just a scholarship is really what Cleon wanted for her daughter. None of the awards, the accolades, none of that mattered to her. She just wanted her the opportunity to, to go ahead and get that scholarship, which was remarkable considering, guys, what, she's, what she has been able to do since she stepped foot on campus for South Carolina. I have had an opportunity to talk to Cleon also, and she talks all the time. These, this is a family of strong faith. And it was first the goal to get Aaliyah the opportunity to go to college. And she credits, she says, and it's true, God gave her the talent to play basketball. And once she came over in the States, her game continued to grow. The attention that she was attracting and the scholarship offers, they're just, they feel and talk about the appreciation and gratitude they have for the opportunities that basketball has provided for Aaliyah. Dre Edwards hits over Boston, and Kentucky has tied this game. Now, Leah Boston already in the first half, nine points, four of five shooting, two rebounds. Foul on Jasmine Massengill of Kentucky. There you go, Steffi. We got a relay of the shoes for you. That's like the third or fourth <laughs> shoe we've had come off this week. Well, I think Shakira Austin lost her shoe. Then uh, Ryan Howard lost hers yesterday. She hit a jumper without it. Shooting foot. I was wondering if it was on the shooting foot. <laughs> that is not a thing. <laughs> you never know. There might be a secret there you just don't know about. Kick out to Cook. Leticia Mihir swats it back in play. That's how South Carolina gets you. Those second chance opportunities, those extra possessions they get from going to the glass. Offense has been great on both sides to start this game. Both teams shooting over 50% from the field. Boston takes it. Rebounds also even. That was a key for Kyra Elzey against this dominant rebounding team for South Carolina. Olivia Owens is short. Jump ball, possession arrow to Kentucky. Bringing a little pressure. A lot of pressure and also bringing a competitive nature. You watch Ryan Howard gets down, defends, and then it is, look, everybody going after the basketball. And I like how the official called this a jump ball. No foul there. These are just two teams that are competing, going after a championship. Kentucky hasn't won the SEC tournament title since 1982. South Carolina's won six of the last seven. Howard gets fouled, and it's called on Bree Hall of South Carolina. Yeah, Kyrie Elsie has Jasmine Massingale ready to check in. Get Ryan Howard a breather to finish this quarter. Champ Week rolling on today with two more women's title games. They're over on ESPN2. Coming up at 4 Eastern, the Big Ten Championship game between Indiana and Iowa. That means we get to see Caitlin Clark and then capping the afternoon with the Pac-12 title game, Utah and Stanford. Caitlin Clark in the conversation for National Player of the Year. She leads the nation averaging 28 points per game. She had 41 points yesterday. 
That's, that's been, normal, it feels <laughs> yes. like. Another day at the office for Caitlin Clark. And she probably shot it all from the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> she has some range now, that's for sure. Under a minute to go in this first quarter. South Carolina, Bree Hall. Transition bucket for the freshman. That's a good decision there. She can get two for one. And South Carolina's height, their defense affecting the transition game of Kentucky. Now, this is not. No, South Carolina should have held there for the last possession. Instead, Kentucky will do that, and they put the ball in the hands of Ryan Howard. She can play one through five. She loves to create. I wonder if Bree Hall understands. She's guarding a lot of experience, a lot of points right there. Offensive foul on Treasure Hunt on the screen. That's her second foul. Well, Bree Hall brought the defense, but she also pushed in transition. This freshman has no fear. Part of the number one recruiting class that is experiencing their first SEC championship game. One of 11 McDonald's All-Americans on South Carolina's roster. She was the number 14 overall player. So now South Carolina will get a chance at the last shot. 5.4 seconds left in the quarter. Aaliyah Boston already nine points. We'll take a breather. Cooks had a great start. She has eight. Just rattles out. A close first 10 minutes. Guess what? A championship is on the line in Nashville today. Ryan Howard, Aaliyah Boston, two teams wanting to take home some hardware. Today. Absolutely, you've got Kyra Elzey and Dawn Staley, and I, I, you made a perfect point to get to the point where you don't have to count. Because it went for so long, there were no African-American coaches that were coaching in the SEC, and now you have two in back-to-back -back years that have led their programs to the SEC Tournament Championship. And we've heard Dawn talk about it, and Kyra, if you see it, you can be it. It just kind of sets the norm moving forward. Well, it's not about just getting an opportunity, but being successful when you get in that position. And that's what Joni Taylor has done at Georgia. Kyra Elzing following suit for the standard that has been set by Don Staley. We saw all four coaches in the semifinal round. They were all female. Three of those were black head coaches. And of course, Coach Yo from Ole Miss was in that conversation. Kelly Harper, that was so cool to see that just the second time in the tournament that we've had four female head coaches in the semifinal round. Absolutely, and all four coaches doing a phenomenal job with their programs. And Kelly Harper with Tennessee, even fighting through the injuries they've had, the loss of players, but still bringing the fight for the Lady Vols. Just listening to Kyra Elzey in the Kentucky huddle and something that she pointed out was we can't have wild shots around the run because it's leading to runouts for South Carolina. So expect them to be a little bit more smart around the rim, maybe kicking it out for a three as opposed to a wild around the rim. And as far as defending Aaliyah Boston, Kyra Elzey feels like she's got too much space. They're going to continue to send the double, but they've got to be body to body. No space for Boston to get through when she comes back into the game. That's a great point when it comes to, though, taking a bad shot against South Carolina is like a turnover. Because when you have the speed of Destiny Henderson, you get the rebound and outlet, outlet to her, it's over. Here's the outlet to Letitia Mihir. So 6-0 run for South Carolina. I asked Kyra Elsey how important it was going to be for Olivia Owens, and she said vital because of the length of Kentucky. She's got to have a presence in the offense for Kentucky. There's a traveling violation on Jada Walker. We talked about the transition on a missed shot. 
You see that time, just a two-hand over-the-head pass. They're going to be a South Carolina sprinting the floor every time South Carolina gets control of the basketball. Look, and that was Camila Cardoso with the baseball pass up ahead. Aaliyah Boston on the bench right now. Not in foul trouble, just South Carolina has depth. They can rotate in. Boston's got nine points, three rebounds. I understand this is the third game in a row for South Carolina, the fourth game in a row for Kentucky. That could play a huge, important role in the second half of this ball game. Yeah, Kentucky came in as the seventh seed. They had to start their run on Thursday. And it's going to be a second traveling violation on Jada Walker. Yeah, I was talking about having Olivia Owens on the floor. She's got to be a vital part of the offense. Not having Treasure Hunt in the game is really slowing down or hindering the offense of Kentucky. Treasure Hunt has that threat from the three-point shot. We saw Olivia Owens get it at the top of the key, and she's not even looking for a shot. That's not her shot, where that's where Treasure Hunt was so vital for Kentucky yesterday. And whereas Kentucky doesn't have a ton of people to rotate in down low. Steffi, Dawn Staley has a wealth of talent in the post. Well, she does, and she said that our bigs have the most experience. Think about Aaliyah Boston. She represents herself on the USA Olympic team. And then also Camila Cardoza with the Brazilian national team. Leticia Mihir with the Brazil, or excuse me, with the Canadian national team. And Dawn Staley obviously coaches the USA Olympic team. So. The, the value and experience that these post players that we're seeing on the floor, they bring it internationally as well. well Camila Cardoso just had a huge block there. Both her and Leticia and me here spent some time in February with their national teams away from South Carolina, but that was the agreement when they came to Carolina. Don Staley wanted them to play for their country and have that national experience. Here's a me here. Traveling violation. Camilla Cardoso transferred to South Carolina from Syracuse, coming in, bringing that size, blocking shots. And she, Don Staley said that when she decided to come to South Carolina, it was a business decision. She did not get distracted or get, what's the word? She didn't want to, she came to South Carolina regardless of the height in the post game that was already there because she wanted to play with great players. She wanted to be in a place that was gonna help her become the best basketball player and person she could be. Yeah, and a lot of times as there's a scuffle on the floor, you could see a player look at a South Carolina or name your other dominant team and be like, no, they already have a, a wealth of, of talent there. I don't. I want to go and be, be the star. And that was not the case for Cardoso. You have to have confidence in your game to go join a program that has had the success like South Carolina in coming and understanding you can contribute. Shot clock violation on Kentucky. It's more of a big picture view as opposed to just looking at the here and now, Absolutely. looking at her game over a long period of time. Yep. South Carolina needs some points. Their scoring drought's almost three minutes. Kentucky in this 2-3 zone. Destiny Henderson, no. Oh, that's the matchup right there. Aaliyah Boston defending Ryan Howard. She's going to shoot over her. That was a deep three. And we said Ryan Howard can play one through five. She can guard one through five. five. She's on Boston right now. Outside shot from Zaya Cook. Cook's got 11. Kentucky wants to talk about it. Zaya Cook shooting 50% from the field. Zaya Cook making up for lost time. Didn't have the game she wanted yesterday on target today.
Bay was not her best game. Today, it's looking pretty good. Well, the heater is on the side of South Carolina because in the first two games, Zaya Cook totaled 11 points. You could see the frustration on her face yesterday. But today is a new day. We haven't even gotten to halftime, and Aaliyah, or Zaya Cook has already scored 11 points, done it in a variety of different ways. She is on her game today, and when she is, hey, that's not a good sign for any opponent that faces South Carolina. Last four games, one for nine from three. Today, three for five. It's a championship game. You got to bring it. Kentucky needs to bring their shot right now. They're 0 for their last 10. They shot 42% in the first quarter. Running out of time, Messingill. Second foul on Destiny Henderson. Peck, you and I talked to Dawn and Court just before the game, and something she really wanted to do, Kentucky, was force them late into the shot clock. And they've been doing such a good job defensively of doing that, forcing those tough shots, because Kentucky, for the large part in this tournament, has got those rhythm threes. Really easy, nice takes in, in, the, in transition, so South Carolina really locking down defensively, kind of what Dawn Staley wanted them to do. Yeah, Tennessee would play defense for about 25 seconds of the shot clock, and then just at the end, big buckets were made by Kentucky. But here's another factor as well. Kentucky, this is their fourth game here, and I just wonder, shots a little short, a little off, and is fatigue having an effect on the Wildcats? Yeah, Kentucky came in as the seventh seed, so we saw them for the first time on Thursday, whereas South Carolina, their first game was Friday. High low, Cardoso. The link and the contribution of the post players for South Carolina. No one has been able to find or solve that equation of how you slow that down. Robin Benton, Kentucky was 0 for 11 before that shot. Yeah, Kentucky needs a little of that. That black uniform magic that they took from game one to game two to get turned on in like it was in game three for today. So with South Carolina's post players, when you have Aaliyah Boston and Camila Cardoso on the floor together, how does that change? Does it change things for Boston? Well, yeah, because Boston now can play away from the basket. And defenses cannot sag off of Boston because she's got a three-point shot, so you can't double team. And Cardoso is six seven. But add to that, you have Letitia Me here on the court that's six four as well. And he's got the longest wingspan on the team. Howard tries to drive and she's stopped by Boston. They're gonna clear it out. Lily Grissetto under the basket defensively for South Carolina. Everybody in the paint for South Carolina and Howard going to the free throw line. Is that on Cordoso? It's on Leticia, me here. First on LA. You watch when Ryan Howard gets the basketball, everybody is trying to pay attention and she will find that opportunity to get the ball to the rim. If she doesn't finish, she can get herself to the free throw line. Howard is only one for six from the field. She's missed her last four shots. But don't forget, Ryan Howard had 16 points in the fourth quarter the last time they played South Carolina. She has her alarm set. Oh, just for what wait. time? Ryan time. Oh. It just hasn't gone off yet. Maybe she hit the snooze. You can't snooze against the number one team in the nation, though. There you go. Did you hit the snooze button, Peck? Are you that person? No. Yeah, me either. If I hit the snooze, I'm not getting up. <laughs> and me here, looking at the high-low game. Kicks What's it back out to Cook. It's 6-4 at the free throw line, and then on each block, 6-7, six, 6-5. Six, <laughs> that shot went for Cook. <laughs> she wanted that one to count. Second foul on Massengill. 
Kyra Elzey will take Massengill out. You replace the veteran point guard with the freshman point guard, who's really not playing like a freshman in this tournament. And she has had a tough assignment this week. She started the tournament, the tournament off having to guard Kayla Pointer of LSU. Yesterday, Jordan Walker. Today, she's got Destiny Henderson. And she was just on Zaya Cook a minute ago. She, Jada Walker doesn't back down from anybody. She took the ball into the basket against Tennessee, against Tamari Key. Kyra Elsie said she came out at the timeout and she said, I didn't try to shoot over that length. I used the reverse layup. Yeah, she was proud of herself. <laughs> Just in case Kyra didn't see it. Kentucky needs some points. Their offense has cooled off. Still just three points, excuse me, four points for Howard. See, that's the Steffi's point. Late shot clock in Kentucky, not able to finish. Kentucky's defense forces the turnover. Out goes Robin Benton. Just short on the three. Bitten has been key in their success as well, and she is one for three from the field. Kentucky had a season-high 12 three-pointers made yesterday. They're one for five today. Yeah, Bitten has averaged 13 points a game here in this tournament. Wedgie. Tuesday night, be sure to tune in to the SEC Network and the ESPN app. It's our next SEC Inside. They grant you an all-access pass to the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. That's at 7 Eastern on Tuesday on the SEC Network. I've seen them all around the tournament all week, shooting, getting that behind-the-scenes footage. It should be really cool on Tuesday. Yeah, a lot of great stories to tell about this weekend, or this week here in Nashville. Aaliyah Boston just works and works. Her motor never stops. Court awareness. She understood that she was underneath the backboard, taking that dribble, getting back a better angle to use the glass. 11 points, five rebounds for Aaliyah Boston. She has 23 straight double-doubles. Jay Walker in the corner. And I think they're going to get that foul on Jada Walker. Aaliyah Boston, we talked about dominance. She drives to the basket. She gets too far underneath. You saw where she kept her left foot. She kept her left foot back so she could step back and have a better angle to use the glass. How do you defend that? It's your shooting foot. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about yeah. the dominance of Aaliyah Boston, though. The body control that she has. Yeah, the best way to defend Aaliyah is to try to get her into foul trouble so that she goes to the bench. Or you've got to take away not only denying her the basketball, but, but the pressure on the passer that's getting the ball to her. There she goes against Howard. Three seconds on South Carolina. It was Victoria Saxon that was in the lane. Kentucky can take the last shot of the half. They haven't scored in over two minutes and 30 seconds. South Carolina has the luxury of having size. Lily Grissett is on Ryan Howard right now. And they turn the ball over. Up ahead to Lily Grissett. Robin Benton with the stuff. Big defensive play by number one, Robin Benton. And the transition, Lily Grissett thinks she has the easy layup, but no, Benton denies. Dawn Staley's going to take a timeout. 4.4 seconds left in the second quarter. We step aside, but only for 30 seconds. Carolina right now in control, and it has everything to do with Aaliyah Boston. This is the SEC Player of the Year, and she is doing work down low in the paint, making it happen. Let me tell you, you've got to bring, you cannot defend Aaliyah Boston one on one. It's going to take at least two, sometimes three, to stop the All American. It's getting 
A little heated in this stacked formation. Dre Edwards has been trying to force her way in between Cardoso and Boston, and Dee Kantner is over there talking to them. Kentucky basketball, 1.7 seconds left. They give it back to South Carolina. Shot won't drop in. Two players in double figures right now for South Carolina, Aaliyah Boston and Zaya Cook. They have combined to outscore Kentucky in the opening 20 minutes of this SEC Tournament Championship game. Dawn is standing by with Steffi. Well, Dawn, you felt like your guards were going to be big in this game. What did you see from them in the first half? Uh, they're, they're impacting it. They're impacting on both sides of the ball. We got to get Henny going a little bit from an offensive standpoint. I mean, she's distributing, but we need, we need to get her to put that ball in the hole a little bit. What do you feel like will be the difference and the key to winning the second half and ultimately winning a championship? We got to slow down. We got to slow down. We're, we're turning the ball over because we're playing faster than our skill set. Once we slow down and see things happening, we'll see who the ball needs to go to. Thank you, Don. Appreciate it. Courtney. Now Boston's got 11 points and five rebounds. Both teams held to single digits in that second quarter. But Aaliyah Boston and South Carolina, their eyes are on another SEC tournament title. Halftime score 30 to 21. Let's get you to the studio. Back to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal Financial Group. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Nashville, Tennessee, the site of the SEC tournament. This is the championship game. South Carolina, the number one team in the nation, taking on Kentucky. And South Carolina has got a nine-point lead right now. Aaliyah Boston already double figures. Her and Zaya Cook combined to outscore Kentucky in the first half. That's 11 points, five rebounds for the front runner for the National Player of the Year. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, Steffi Sorensen on the sidelines for us. We're getting ready to crown a champion in about 20 minutes. And South Carolina's started to pull ahead after Kentucky challenged them early. Well, and they were finding ways Kentucky did, or South Carolina did, of getting those paint points. 20 points of the 30 came from in the paint. Heck yeah, this is how it happened for South Carolina. When Kentucky was in that zone, then you watch, Aaliyah Boston is right here on the bottom of the screen. Against the zone, going right inside, you let the big girl get two feet in the paint, forget about it. So then Kentucky switches and now going man to man. And when that happens, you give it to Aaliyah Boston up top. Well, what does she have but a target? Six, seven, Camilla Cardoso. So the high low action is there as well. So many different op options for South Carolina. And you see the shot judge, ju so excuse me. That's easy for me to say, shot chart here. The blue circles are the makes. You see those all packed inside the paint. So many opponents against South Carolina come in with the mindset of take away paint points. It's easier said than done, but that's a good start for Kentucky. Dre Edwards knocking down a three-point shot. That's just their second made three-pointer. They're coming off a season high. 12 three-pointers made in their win in the semifinal against Tennessee. Aaliyah Boston, she can create space for herself. South Carolina's got post players who can pass. So that time it was Victoria Saxon up top making the pass down low to Aaliyah Boston. Look, for both of these teams, that second quarter wasn't a pretty one. South Carolina was held to a season low nine points in any quarter this year. Kentucky just three points. It's the fifth time in a quarter this season South Carolina has held them to single digits. Boston top of the key, they'll swing it over to Zaya Cook. She has been night and day compared to yesterday. Three points yesterday, 11 points in the first half today. A lot of offense was drawn up for opportunities for Zaya Cook. Boston wants the basketball. Traveling violation. 
But getting the ball inside to Boston is key for South Carolina. Look, she's down there by herself. That should never happen defensively because she's going to get the seal, keep the defense on top, and get herself in great position. Boston looking for her 24th straight double-double. She has 13 points, five rebounds. That is an SEC record. Massengill dumps it off to Dre Edwards. Kentucky's at its best when players are moving and they're moving the basketball. They've assisted on 62% of their field goals here at the SEC tournament. Trey Edwards. It's going to be whistled for that foul. Steffi, how is Kentucky coming out of the locker room? Well, I'm going to start calling you assistant coach, Courtney Lau, because you know your stuff. That's exactly what Kyra <laughs> Elsie told me about offensively. They have to move, make the extra pass, and make good decisions within their half-court offense. But in terms of defensively, expect them to play man and zone. But she felt like they were just not finishing the play defensively. Too many offensive rebounds in that first half. Nine for South Carolina, something that they have to clean up here in this third. Well, going back to your point about moving around, you saw the first few possessions have been run through Dre, Dre Edwards because Aaliyah Boston is guarding her. And so a lot of times Dre Edwards would penetrate in, cause the defense to shift, kick out, and then immediately you're going to see Dre Edwards then locate out because Boston has had to help. And I believe Kyra Elsey is looking to create open shots, face-up game from Dre Edwards. Zaya Cook at the free throw line. Foul was on Ryan Howard, her first. You see, Aaliyah Boston has Dre Edwards, and a lot of times Kentucky can put Dre Edwards in ball screen action. Really, any kind of screening action where Aaliyah Boston has to help. Make a Boston have to move so you don't have to score over her. Nine seconds. Oh, and Jada Walker too much on the layup. She had an open lane. They'll kick it out to Destiny Henderson, looking for the corner three. Two doesn't work. I'll take three instead. That's the first field goal for Destiny Henderson. Started out 0 for 5. But you know what? She hasn't forced the issue. I mean, I like the shots that she has taken. I like the decisions that she has made to distribute the basketball. Sometimes Don Staley has talked about she wants Destiny Henderson to shoot the ball. She wants her to be aggressive offensively in her scoring mentality. As she took 22 shots in their regular season finale, and Dawn was totally fine with that. Free, free throws coming for Bree Beal. South Carolina going to work on the glass, creating those extra opportunities. On the miss, Zaya Cook goes up again, and then the kick out to Destiny Henderson, left alone. Hitty knocks it down. South Carolina is first in the nation in rebounding margin, and they're plus 14 today. And they're getting on the offensive glass. They have 12 to Kentucky, only having five. Yeah, when you're South Carolina and you rebound 45% of your own misses, Keeps your percentage up. And it's not just the post players, the guards rebounding for South Carolina as well. You saw Destiny Henderson inside battling. Zaya Cook, she has five rebounds. Look, Dre Edwards calling for it. 10 seconds now, Robin Benton to Dre Edwards in the corner. I mean, that's the best option to defend Aaliyah Boston is to go at her offensively. And you've got to try to get the foul on her, get her into some foul trouble where she has to take a seat. Well, she didn't have any fouls in the first half. Exactly. It's the first on Boston.
Edwards gets the first. Coming up tonight on ESPN and the app will have our NBA Sunday doubleheader. The Raptors battle the Cavs at 7.30 Eastern, followed by the Knicks taking on the Clippers. Our coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. Now, speaking of the pros, Ryan Howard for Kentucky. She's expected to be the number two pick in the WNBA draft. She's got to get going. She hasn't had a bucket, hasn't scored a point since three minutes and six seconds left in the second quarter. Dre Edwards with her third foul. Ryan can take over a game. That's why she is such a highly sought after prospect. They need her to do that now. Well, they need to get her the basketball. And then they've got to run things. It seemed like it was more intentional in the first two games of this tournament of her being offensive minded to go get buckets. And today, Ryan has gone back to running an offense. I understand Kentucky's strategy right now is to go to Dre Edwards. But I like the ball in the hands of number 10, Ryan Howard. And Dreon Edwards turns the basketball over. That's the eighth turnover by Kentucky. They had a season low yesterday, just seven turnovers for the Wildcats. Treasure Hunt hasn't played very much. And she came out and hit a couple of shots. She's in foul trouble with three. Destiny Henderson, yes! Henny crushed it! I think Kyra Elsie's got to consider playing Treasure Hunt before this lead gets too far out of control. Free Beal under the basket gets fouled. What's the difference that Treasure can bring to Kentucky? Well, Treasure has the ability to be able to face up, pull the defense out, knock down three-point shots. You know, just knocked down a three-point shot. Destiny Henderson, she's got six. Two of three from behind the arc for Henny and South Carolina with the lead. South Carolina has had been able to be in control because of the defense that they have brought on Ryan Howard, being able to bring length, to really take away the vision, take away the lanes. The rotations have been there and have made it a very difficult to, a difficult day for Ryan Howard so far in this ballgame. This is a player that averages about 26 points per game over her career in the SEC tournament today. Just six. So it's just what makes South Carolina you know, such a tough defense because they, they can bring length at every position on the floor pretty much. Even if their opponents have a strong point guard, Bree Bill, for one, can guard any position just about on the floor. If you have a player like Ryan Howard has the versatility to play inside and out, we saw Lily Grissett defend her. Leticia here has had some time on Ryan Howard as well as Bree Bell. Yeah, and, keep, and keeping fresh bodies on her too. Yeah, a sound defensive team for South Carolina. They're fourth in the nation in scoring defense. Aaliyah Boston. She just makes it look easy. Look, to me, it is no question. National Player of the Year is number four, Aaliyah Boston. Why? Because she just affects the game in so many different ways. You really, you can't stop her. And then defensively, she brings it. And watch her run the floor. She's made it tough for Kentucky to get anything inside. She blocks shots. She gets on the glass. She rebounds. And very rarely do you see Aaliyah Boston making mistakes. Jaya Cook is short. Had 11 points in the first half. She's had two here in the third quarter. Howard needed that bucket.
Now, Howard is that player, and we have seen it so many times when it's Ryan time, the game, the momentum shifts quickly in the favor of the Big Blue. Victoria Saxton got the rebound using that height underneath for South Carolina. Aaliyah Boston has established herself in this ball game. She's done a lot of her work down low in the paint, but Kentucky needs its star to shine now if they want an opportunity to try to cut down nets and win an SEC tournament championship. It has been four decades since Kentucky has done that. Their one and only SEC tournament championship was in 1982. Saxton at the line. Boston will take a breather Look, on the bench for South Carolina. She's two rebounds away from her 24th double-double. Trying to help South Carolina get its seventh SEC tournament title in the last eight seasons. Dawn Staley has done an amazing job at South Carolina building this into not just winning a championship, but making it a championship program. They've been number one all season. They've only lost one game. That was at the start of SEC play to Missouri. And since then, they have won 17 in a row. The last seven of those wins have been by double figures. The balance that they have. And in those wins, to South Carolina can win in a number of different ways. It can be a high scoring game and they can win. It can be a low scoring game. They can execute and grind it out. They just find different ways to win. Well, we saw yesterday, they didn't have a field goal in the fourth quarter and they still won the ball game. <laughs> well, their, their defense always travels. Their rebound is always in their bag. Jasmine Massengill, a solid take to the basket for Kentucky. Last time these two teams met, Kentucky made its run in the fourth quarter. They outscored South Carolina 24 to 17 in that final frame. They lost the game, but that fight is there. If they can get a stop here, Kentucky, go down and score, cut this to 10, conversation will change. There's the stop, now they need the score. You like that? Other players are stepping up, one of which the point guard, Jasmine Massingale, first going by Destiny Henderson to the basket down and then bringing it down low. Little post up, little Magic, ja Magic Johnson game for Kentucky. They have now cut this to 10, and Kentucky believes. Three point play for Jasmine Massingale. Henderson picked up her third foul. We've seen how the offense is contagious for Kentucky. Well, and with Ryan Howard hitting a bucket, then Jasmine Massingale, who normally doesn't get too involved in the offense, she starts to turn things up. And now Kentucky has Treasure Hunt back in the ball game. Zaya Cook taking her time, finding her shot up to 15 points. We're going to see big time players make big time plays down the stretch as we finish this second half. Howard to the free throw line. Zaya Cook was averaging six points over her last four games. She's got 15. And the patience finding the seam, not just relying on the outside shot, but using her quickness, her ability to take it off the bounce to get all the way to the rim. First free throw goes for Howard. Getting this into single digits. Buckle up. This could get interesting. An SEC tournament championship on the line. 
South Carolina is the regular season champion. Kentucky's looking for its first tournament title in 40 years. Leticia me here, elbow shot short. Howard's looking at her options. The trail, Treasure Hunt. Top of the key, Treasure Hunt. One of the things that Kyra Elsey told us is that they were going to make South Carolina make shots from the outside. Look at Dre Edwards, how she steps back, really dares Leticia Ami here to shoot the basketball, and that creates an opportunity for Kentucky to head the other direction. Zaya Cook whistled for, excuse me, it was Robin Benton whistled for her first foul, third foul. Puts Leticia Me here at the free throw line. Aaliyah Boston is waiting at the scorer's table to check in for South Carolina. Just two fouls on Benton. On double-double watch for Aaliyah Boston. Two rebounds away from that 24th double-double in a row. One rebound away. Bree Bill and Ryan Howard keep an eye. Those two get a little chippy. Kentucky ball. Bree Beal, second personal. Look, that's two tough players going at it right there. Brie Bill is up for the challenge. She respects and understands how good Ryan Howard is and understands what her assignment has to be if South Carolina wants to be the one that holds the trophy at the end of the day. I was reading an article about Brie Beal and she talked about her defense and she talked about how it is all knowing personnel. You can't guard a shooter like you do a driver. You've got to know what that player's tendencies are and you've got to apply it in the basketball game. And Steffi Bree does a great job of that. It, she does, Courtney, and she does so many little things. And, and Don Staley winning coach of the year for the fifth time. She's actually going to give that award to Bree Beal because of plays like she like she constantly contributes to the team that go unnoticed, but Donnelly knows it's important for her, for the team's success. So she will give that Coach of the Year award to Bree Beal this year. Easy bucket for Victoria Saxton. That's a pretty cool gesture from Don Staley. Well, Don Staley understands that she wants to make sure that her players feel their value. It is not fluff. It is sincere. Bree Beal, you don't get recognition for defending and keeping the star player on the other team below their average, nobody recognizes that. So when you get that from your head coach, that means a lot to Bree Bill. Bree Bill just picked up her third foul. There was a tough play under the basket. It's put Ryan Howard back at the free throw line. Howard has nine of Kentucky's last 14 points. Do you see that Ooh. little inbounds? That, would you put that under the category of trickeration? Oh, absolutely. Oh, goodness. Aaliyah Boston went straight at Ryan Howard for the finish. I mean, highlights from coast to coast on that play. South Carolina with the trickerations. Boston puts it down. Henderson steps out of bounds to inbound it and give it back to the All-American. The leading candidate for National Player of the Year. Wow. It's not every day in the college game that you see a post player taking it 94 feet, shooting the layup, and getting to the free throw line. She was the key option in that press break. Unless you're watching South Carolina every day, I guess. <laughs> That's true. Wow, what a play. 
Boston one rebound away from her 24th consecutive double-double. Destiny Henderson working the clock, six seconds. Elevates over Robin Benton. I think Benton got a piece of it. Shot clock violation. Nine point four seconds for Kentucky. Massengill, can she shake Henderson? Does it with a screen, drops it to Edwards, misses the layup. At the end of the third quarter, the score is South Carolina. South Carolina up 55 to 43. Ryan Howard trying to get her team back in it though. Aaliyah Boston, only one rebound away from another double-double. She has dominated, but will it be Ryan time in this fourth quarter? Can Kentucky get back into this ball game and compete for an SEC title today? Number one team in the nation all season. And Dawn Stalick just continues to build. She's not satisfied. She keeps her team hungry. She has talked about how, look, you cannot take for granted when you come to South Carolina, it automatically happens. It is something you have to work for. South Carolina seeking its seventh SEC tournament championship in the last eight seasons. They already have that regular season title. They're sixth. But Kentucky has found its way. They got back on track in the third quarter after scoring just three points in the second. You talked about how these two teams earlier this season, that fourth quarter was big for Kentucky. Do they have it in them? Glenn Howard is holding the jersey of Aaliyah Boston. And those two, number 10 in black and number four in white, they're battling. They're great friends, but right now, huge competitors. There's 24 straight double-doubles for Aaliyah Boston with that rebound. Continuing to add to that SEC record. Look, she didn't, it didn't come easy. One of her close friends, Ryan Howard, staying all over Aaliyah Boston, but Boston just one rebound away from that 24th double-double, kept working, kept moving, and got the rebound. She is there. The streak continues. Broke Sylvia Fowles' record of 19 consecutive double-doubles and hasn't stopped. Oh, I, I think it'll, it will continue on. She's just so, she's so hard to keep off the glass. She's so hard to defend because she can score in so many different ways. And you have to respect the talent that's around her because she's a willing passer as well. She just does so many good things on the court. Yeah, we saw last night she was directing traffic, telling her teammates where to pass the basketball to set her up and get them in the best position to score. She knows every position on the floor. She knows where everybody needs to be. Layup for Trey Edwards, 17 points for Dreana Edwards. She came in to this tournament last six games of the regular season, averaging 23 points a game, Dre Edwards. Yeah, over their nine game win streak, she's up to 20 points a game, shooting 55% from the field. Bree Hall. Oh, got robbed on that one. You see Ryan Howard, she was being extremely careful because she's got three fouls and she knows she's got to stay on the floor. Three seconds. The dump off to Edwards. Yeah, that's hard to score against Victoria Saxton. Four seconds for the Wildcats. 
smart decision, the freshman to the veteran. And composure, no panic for the Big Blue Nation. Jada Walker was just called for a foul. This freshman does not get rattled one bit. It helps when you're a coach's kid. You understand time and score, how much time's left on the clock. Keep your head up. Players on your team, keep moving. She finds Ryan Howard and gets the score. Boston will bring it up the floor again. South Carolina has led by as many as 15 today. But Kentucky just refuses to go away. They can push, need to score, really score before South Carolina can get their defense set. And Kentucky wants to take a timeout here. They will have the ball when we come back. Some work to do for the Wildcats against the number one team in the nation. Nashville, Tennessee. Lots of dreams in this city, especially for these two basketball teams that we have in the SEC Tournament Championship game here today. One of those, the number one team in the nation, South Carolina. But Kentucky is the challenger, and they need these two women to help them catch up to the Gamecocks. That's Batman and Robin for Kentucky. Ryan Howard has 16 points. Dre Edwards has 17. If one of those two get caught, catch fire in these last seven minutes. That really breathes confidence in the rest of Kentucky and I believe could make this thing real interesting down the stretch here in the fourth quarter. Ryan Howard has had 12 of her points in the second half. South Carolina's largest lead has been 15. Howard's trying to post up on Grissett. Dre Edwards by herself for three. for Dre Edwards. Look, Dre Edwards has got that look. She, they're not going to go down without a fight. And with Kentucky's ability to shoot the three, this game is far from over. You see, Kentucky has gone back to pack in the paint. Five seconds. Oh, and that's on Dre Edwards, though. That's her fourth. Oh, and after she just knocked down a three, and Coach Cal is loving it. The run, Kentucky's on. But this is crucial for Dre Edwards to have to go to the bench with four fouls. This happened yesterday. She got a foul called and then got a technical, a technical called, and she had to go take a seat. And Kyra Elsey and she had a conversation about how important it was for Dre to be able to stay on the floor. So when do you put her back in the game? Henny, corner. Depends on if Treasure Hunt now, can she fill the role of Robin for the Kentucky Wildcats? She's definitely a scorer. Dre Edwards can score. She's also an excellent rebounder. Not on the floor right now for Kentucky with those four fouls. Walker to Massengill. It's a late shot clock again for Kentucky. Swatted, Camila Cardoso. Don Staley told us when Ole Miss made their run in the semifinals yesterday, she said, we got away from our style of play. We have to be disciplined to stay in our style of how we want this game to be. And, and their number one part of their style is that they've got to defend. You've got to defend, and then you have to be disciplined to execute offensively. Can't allow a second chance opportunity because showtime, prime time, Robin Benton, she helps out Kentucky to chip away at this lead. Kentucky heating up from three. 10 to three run. South Carolina just has five points in the fourth quarter. Make it seven, Aaliyah Boston on a mission. You were talking about South Carolina style. Style's gotta be, give the ball to Aaliyah Boston. Boston with her first 20 point game since February 3rd against Alabama. That was nine games ago.
Treasure Hunt stepped around the South Carolina defense. See Hunt playing off Bree Bill. Bill won't take that shot early. But she'll take that when she battles on the glass. Another offensive board for South Carolina. And Boston threw it away. This is a time. Things are getting heated. A championship on the line. South Carolina up, but here comes Kentucky. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college battle of this SEC championship game. It has been a 12 to 7 run by Kentucky. First, Dre Edwards, then Robin Bitten knocking down the three. Treasure Hunt coming back into the ball game. The Wildcats are not going away. They are staying to the end. They want to cut down some nets. South Carolina just those seven points in this fourth quarter with a championship on the line. Both of these teams want to leave here with some hardware. We're seeing that extra fight in Kentucky as they has trailed by as many as 15. Today it would be their first SEC, their second SEC championship in school history, the first since 1982. Meanwhile, South Carolina has dominated this tournament, seeking their seventh tournament title in the last eight seasons. Howard, the alarm just went off. Ryan time. Here we go. She now can we, take over a game. We're going to see the two stars step up big. I can imagine Aaliyah Boston, the key has got to be for South Carolina to go right there. How did she get that shot up? Was there a foul in there? None were called. Dre Edwards back in the ball game. She has four fouls, but has been key and is a spark for Kentucky coming off the bench. See, this is how Kentucky has to play. Treasure Hunt, Dre Edwards playing the post, going against the size of South Carolina. Ryan Howard stepping up big. Ryan time, not just shooting from the perimeter, but going against the big post players of South Carolina. She gets by Cardoso, goes at Aaliyah Boston and gets the finish. Zaya Cook with the basketball for South Carolina. Cook has 15, one of two players in double figures. You can probably guess who the other one is. That would be Boston. Absolutely. Now, this is where Cardo Cardoso has got to expand her game. In that free throw line area, if she can get a consistent jumper from there. Five seconds. Kentucky basketball, their defense slows down the layup, makes it a tough shot for Henny and gets the ball. Oh, it's just in that huddle for Kentucky. And Courtney, if there's ever an indication of how dominant Aaliyah Boston is, the first two minutes the players huddled around of how they can guard Aaliyah Boston. It was, tre it was Treasure Hunt, it was Dre Edwards, and the King, you name it, they were all rallying around defending her. Well, she draws attention from all five players on the floor. The presence of Aaliyah Boston does make the defense shrink in. Wherever she is, she'll be there. This was a foul on Treasure Hunt, her fourth. Wow. I, with their arms just, just got in, entwined. I've seen more contact than that happen throughout this ball game where nothing was called. Yeah, they've let them play today for sure. Zaya Cook. Big box out by Treasure Hunt. Kentucky has missed her presence on the floor. Back to Edwards, trying to get past Boston. Nope. Denied. But I like the fight. I like the idea. That's a great idea for Dre Edwards to take it, but 
Aaliyah Boston, she had other ideas. Five blocks for South Carolina. Dre's going to get the bucket anyway. No fear. Doesn't matter. Dre Edwards is not intimidated, not for one second. It's a three-point game. And South Carolina has to call timeout. Kentucky trailed by 15 points in the third quarter. 30-second timeout. There's no quit in Kentucky no matter what happens. Let me tell you, don't allow getting your shot blocked to break your confidence. Stay in it. Stay after it. Go right back to Dre Edwards. She gets the finish. She believes. What's changed for Kentucky if they, as they've made this run? They have held South Carolina to seven points in the fourth quarter. You know, I don't think anything has necessarily changed. I think that the, Kentucky has just been reminded of the confidence that they got the last time they played South Carolina. That's the mentality they have kept when they have gone on this nine-game win streak. That is what the mentality of Kentucky was when they came to Nashville, Tennessee. Kyra Elsie just reminded them what this business trip is all about. For South Carolina, how do you regroup? You have to continue to go to Aaliyah Boston. You've got to take care of the basketball. South Carolina has had some crucial turnovers. They have to be patient, use the clock, time and score. Boston looks for space. Treasure Hunt with the rebound. Layup for Dre Edwards, that gives her 24 points. It's a one-point game. South Carolina needs to get movement, though, on their offense. An 8-0 run for Kentucky. Aaliyah Boston with the basketball. Wildcat ball. Coach Cal loves it. They're going to take a look at this at the monitor to make sure they got the possession correct. Oh, that's a fantastic look for oh, our yeah. crew. That's a great shot. That's Kentucky ball. That's Kentucky basketball. So you're down one if this is Kentucky ball, and it should be. They're confirming it now at the monitor. 30-second shot clock. I like how that you get that how Kentucky has executed as of late in this fourth quarter. They've been very patient, moving the basketball around. They've gotten the ball to Dre Edwards, and they have pulled Aaliyah Boston away from the basket and given Dre Edwards room to work. This is a woman on the floor right now that is not intimidated by the number one team in the country. She is not intimidated in going against a, si a player with the size of Aaliyah Boston. Look, she's ready to compete. She is answering the call for Kentucky. Again, confirming the possession. They originally called it for Kentucky. After review, it is indeed black ball. So they confirm it will be Kentucky basketball, 43.9 seconds away from determining the SEC tournament champion. Now, for South Carolina as they defend, Look, they have the athleticism on the court. They can switch all screens. They have got to really lock down and have accountability defensively. They don't have to foul right now, but they need to get a stop, and they need to rebound the heck out of the basketball. It was the fourth quarter in the last meeting against South Carolina where Kentucky flipped the switch. They won nine straight after that loss to South Carolina. Now they've got... They're just one point away from catching up to the Gamecocks. Ryan Howard back to Edwards. So you have Aaliyah Boston guarding away from the basket. 
Treasure Hunt now. Both bigs out of the lane. And it's coughed up into the hands of South Carolina. Timeout Gamecocks. So South Carolina calls timeout. They can advance the basketball here. A one-point lead for the number one team in the nation who's only lost one game all season. Well, and one thing that Kentucky is going to need to do is try to get a five, six second call, trying to not let the ball come in bounds. Once it does, now that you've got to go for that steal. And then you have to foul. You have to foul. Put South Carolina at the free throw line. South Carolina, a 67% free throw shooting team. Right now it's 18.3 seconds left. It has been Kentucky that has taken over in the fourth quarter, outscoring South Carolina 18 to 7. Now also Kentucky, they have two, they have two timeouts left. But I've got to believe right now that they're thinking, okay, first five second call, going for the steal. And if they don't get the steal, they got to foul right away. They cannot allow the time to tick off the clock. They're down one. South Carolina first has to get the ball in bounds. And John's got to call timeout. That's the last timeout for South Carolina. Hey, if you like this, we're not done. Rolling on later today with two more women's title games on ESPN2 coming up at 4 Eastern. It's the Big Ten Tournament Championship. We'll cap the ap afternoon with the Pac-12 title game that's coming up today on ESPN2. But this championship right now, we got a one-point ball game here in Nashville. Dodge Staley just had to burn her last time out, unable to get the ball in. Kentucky did its job. What they were trying to do was get a five-second call. Same defense again for Kentucky. They're trying not to allow the ball to come in bounds. And if South Carolina gets the ball in bounds, then Kentucky needs to foul right away. They want to make Kentucky shoot the free throws and they are make South Carolina shoot the free throws. And I can only imagine that Kyra Elsey with the two timeouts get the rebound or get the ball out of bounds and call timeout and advance the basketball so that she can get her offense set on her side of the floor. The thing that Kentucky has done so well coming into this tournament, shoot the three ball. So even if South Carolina were to hit their two free throws, hey, look, Kentucky, they've got an offensive weapon in their pocket. Yeah, Kentucky has shot 42% from behind the arc in this tournament. And South Carolina has spread the entire court out. They have to get the ball in. They have no timeouts. They do to Zaya Cook. And Kentucky immediately fouls. Mastin Gill, her third. Clock reads 16.4. Big moment for Zaya Cook, struggling in this tournament until today. Now, these are two huge free throws. And this is the first. Misses them both, and Kentucky has the rebound. Aaliyah Boston fouls Benton. That's a good foul by Aaliyah Boston because you don't have your defense set, and we talked about how well Kentucky can shoot the three. It's a one-point game, and Kentucky is not yet in the bonus. You know, South Carolina had fouls to give, so it will be no shots for Kentucky. And Kentucky calls timeout. They'll have one timeout remaining. It's 11.1 .1 seconds on the clock. Kentucky has the basketball, a championship on the line. The thing that I've, I've got to imagine is that Kentucky is going to go through 
Ryan Howard and Dre Edwards, two-man game between those two. If you're going for the win, you go through, number one, a player who you have been on her back throughout her career at the University of Kentucky, and that's Ryan Howard. And then a player that has shown no fear in Dre Edwards that has come in and made crucial baskets, made crucial decisions for Kentucky down the stretch. What South Carolina is going to need to do is they're going to have to switch all screens. They're going to have to make sure that they defend and they can foul. They still have they have three they have two fouls to give before they have three fouls to give before uh, before they can put the uh, Kentucky would get to the free throw line. It's been a fourth quarter. Fury for Kentucky. Is it Ryan time here? She's got 18 points. Just making shots, making decisions, getting back to being the off offensive aggressor for the Wildcats. As you said, Kentucky with plenty of options here. but not much time to work with, just 11.1 seconds. Kentucky with three fouls to give. South just Carolina gotta, with three fouls to give. I'm sorry, South Carolina with three fouls to give, and they gotta make sure that they don't foul Kentucky when they're in the act of shooting. Treasure Hunt with the basketball. Back to Masson Gill. Dre Edwards, top of the key with the three! South Carolina doesn't have a timeout. 4.2 seconds. South Carolina with a prayer. Big blue madness in March. They've waited 40 years. The SEC Tournament title to the Kentucky Wildcats. go to when you're going after an SEC championship you go to the big dog Dre Edwards how big was she for Kentucky tonight biggest shot of her life Dre Edwards scored Kentucky's last seven points. None bigger than the three. Steffi's standing by with Dre Edwards. Dre, such a big shot. How'd you knock it in? Hey, they told me to shoot it. They was gonna give me the ball. Anybody that was open was gonna shoot it. So many emotions from this Kentucky team. How'd you guys do this? Hey man, we just battled. We've been battling all year. We faced that varsity and we turned it up. And we turned it up. What was said by your coach when you guys upset the number one team in the country? Hey man, we here. We ready to work. Can't wait to make it to NCAA. We're not stopping this and we ain't done. We're not done. All we need, Courtney. The Wildcat train keeps on rolling. Dre Edwards talked about the adversity that this team has been through. That has toughened them up. They have had the resiliency and the big dog with the big shot to claim the SEC Tournament Championship for the Kentucky Wildcats. 1982 was the last time and the only time Kentucky has won the conference tournament title. Kyra Elsey in her second season just got it done. Kyra Elsey just got the Wildcats and Ryan Howard her first SEC tournament championship. There was a conversation mid-season with Ryan about letting the pressure go. Your legacy is set. Whatever you do is just extra. Well, guess what? This tournament championship, that's extra for Kentucky. 
A last second shot, an upset in Nashville. Dreams coming true in the Music City. Kentucky knocks off number one, South Carolina. The title going back to Lexington.